mentioned Janine uh, earlier. You've raised a family on Heidelberg. She's been a part of this project for... 23 years. 23 years. 23 years. Um, how's that been to have um, a partner here and raising children in the midst of all this creation, in the midst of all this, these questions and controversy and learning and excitement too? I believe Janine was sent um, to me. And I met Janine in um, um, 1993. Uh, she was sent. I, uh, I was, uh, Janine is my third marriage. Uh, and she came to, um, to be a help, a help. Oh, I, at that time I was, I was just an artist. And, um, in my case, I was not thinking about structure and uh, a foundation. And so Janine came with tools that I needed in order to structure the project and to help me personally, uh, to help me to, to love because I was afraid to love, hmm. because I felt like I, as a kid, during that, that accident, I was, I, I had so much love in my heart for my cousin, him and I was best friends, that I felt like I lost that. And Janine came in and she gave me love, taught me how to love again. So she was needed. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful story. Uh, also, I, I want to uh, say this too because it's important. Um, Janine exposed me to a um, 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 a teaching, a, a knowledge, of something she's been studying, and she's been studying metaphysics for a long time, and uh, uh, so she exposed me to, to metaphysics, and <clears throat> it's something that's part of my life now, and I I love it. It helps me to look at it in a in um in a new way, where you look deeper and deeper, and you realize it has no limits. It's just like life and space and time. It's endless, no limits. And so she gave me that, also. What do you think you gave her? I'm going to be a little facetious here at first. I, get, I think I gave her a lot of bullshit at first and a lot of <laughs> hell and um, all of that crazy stuff that I, that, that was in here and, mm -hmm. and stuff that I, I was afraid to, to deal with and I was running and hiding and, and so I gave her all of that. <laughs> so I would have to say that it was reciprocal. We gave each other something. Mm -hmm. And uh, after many, many years, you know, I'm learning to... Um, to find a balance in all of it now. So I think I gave her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot on both sides. Absolutely. Is Heidelberg all that you expected it would be or hoped that it would be when you first had the vision to begin it? I didn't know. I didn't know what it was gonna be. I, I just heard it. I was propelled, something was, pushing me, driving me to do it. Uh, it would wake me up. I didn't know. I was afraid and I, I just didn't know at first. I, some of my professors, they didn't know. My neighbors didn't know. But I was trusting that that was in me because it wouldn't let me stop. It's taken me places I've never thought that I would go. Mm -hmm. The whole world comes there. You have thousands of visitors each year. They come back and take the word with them. Janine was saying that uh, just a few minutes ago that uh, apparently there was a Catholic Archbishop that came and they were showing him around uh, Gross Point, and one of the places he wanted to come on his list was Heidelberg. Came from London. From London. <clears throat> yes. 
I did a Skype lecture two weeks ago, little kids in Denver. And we just had this great conversation, these kids, and these kids sent me a box of drawings and jelly beans and notes and sharing with me the effect that that conversation had on the little babies, but also it was reciprocal because they had an effect on Everything goes to ice. Yeah. And so they were so excited that they sent this box, all of these beautiful drawings and clocks, drawings that they made by having a conversation and people that keeps coming back. And for them, it's like a fix. They need to come back and get a, uh, a shot. And they come back to see what's new mm -hmm. or to see what's happening. And these are people from all over the world. Do you see yourself uh, influencing artists throughout the world? Do you see your work, if not the exact uh, type of painting, uh, exact artwork you do, but some of the same uh, underlying philosophy, do you find that being spread to different countries? Yes, I would say yes to that. But there's nothing new here in the world. I'm, I'm just repeating what has been done before, and then what I do, someone else repeats that, and it goes on and on and on. Because when I sum it up, and what we're really sitting here talking about, at least from my point of view, we're talking about energy. And it's everywhere. Energy. Round and around. I do it, and when I die, somebody else is going to carry the baton, the torch. Your, uh, your work has a political uh, edge to it, but yes. it's not primarily political. Yes. Uh, yes. At times, <laughs> it's been more, um, you've been more direct or outspoken about it. I think the, almost like a protest, the back of the bus. Uh, it's another piece. Um, uh, so there's uh, some political themes that you delve into or touch, but then move on to wider scope, uh, a, a much wider scope that um, it strikes me how playful uh, some of your art can be while it's also very serious. It's a fusion. Um, uh, a lot of used objects, and intentionally so, right? And it is yes. in the recycling? Yes. I think we have to recycle the human spirit that's been lost. People are walking around dead in the spirit. Government can't save us. You have to do it yourself. So this is my way of saying, I'm, I'm not gonna wait on government to come here and to fix my situation or to turn around my circumstances. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna work with government to show government that I'm not waiting on them, but I'm not gonna make fun of them. Or I'm not gonna badmouth them. I'm gonna do my part. And together we can change the world. And that's my message to the world. Stop waiting. Waiting has gotten us in trouble. You wait too long and the past you, you buy. So you can't afford to wait. You have to get up and make it happen. Saying to the world that go and make it happen. Stop waiting on government. I, I started a new project with the Bach School where I've taken over a house and I, these little kids working on this house. It's called House of Stars. And kids are painting stars all over this house and it's a reflection of the kids but I wanted to create a visual something that they can look at because if you see it and you see it and you see it you won't forget it and every one of those kids in that school I see them as stars the people next door to this house that we're working on said to me they've been waiting on the city for 10 years and I said to them stop waiting make it happen Make them come to you. Flip the script. Do something radical, something that you wouldn't do. Think outside the box and make them come to you. Lead the way. 
Hallelujah. Lead the way. And that's right in this neighborhood, isn't it, the Box School? Yes. Studying the philosophy of Grace Lee Box, reading her book, uh, The New American Revolution. And I've said that to the kids. You have to become your own revolution. And the word revolution is not a bad word. It's a wonderful word if you know how to apply it to your life. Mm -hmm. A revolution. You got to make it happen. A revolution with creation rather than anger fueling it. One of the kids said he watched the video and he saw the city had demolished the, the height of our product. And, and the kid said, I'm so upset. I said, well, I don't want you to be upset. He said, I'm going to kill him. I said, no, I don't want you to kill him. See, I believe now, today, Tyree Guyton, me. I have to reach a point of consciousness that I can love my enemies. Love conquers all. It's an inspirational message. Try to tell that little boy. Yeah. Don't kill. Love them. Love them. Dr. King said that that's the only medicine that can take your enemy and make him your friend. Love. The power of love. The power of loving yourself. Starts there, doesn't it? Took me a long time to get that. With a little help from your friends. <laughs> <laughs>